All right, so you're wondering what the pros and the cons of living in Clearwater, Florida could be. Well, in this video, we're gonna answer those questions. Hey everyone, Juan Alcala here with the True Living Group at EXP Realty. And if this is your first time to the channel, we make videos that are all things Tampa Bay. What it's like to live here, what it's like to work here, what it's like to play here, the food, the dining, the outdoors, the beaches, and the sunshine. And hey, also, if this is your first time to the channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click that little bell. That way you can be notified every time we make a new video just like this. And it also helps the videos get out to other people who may be considering relocating or investing in the area as well. And, you know, we get phone calls and emails, text messages. Heck, I'm even getting direct messages through Instagram from people just like you who are considering making that move. So however you got to get a hold of us when it comes to relocating, moving or investing in the Tampa Bay area, just know that me and my team here at the True Living Group have got your back. All right, so let's get into the pros of living in Clearwater. And the first one, it I think it's pretty obvious to everyone. And the reason you're probably watching this channel is because of our weather, all right? And at the end of the day, Florida has some of the most incredible weather. Now, it's a huge state, y'all. So, I mean, from one end to the other, you're talking over 10 hours of driving. Um, if you go all the way down to Key West, I mean, it'll take you literally an entire day to go from the top of Florida to Key West. And Clearwater is located centrally on the Gulf Coast in the state of Florida here. So, you know, our winter weather is what makes people <laughs> come down, right? You know, our average temperatures from November through May, you know, there's 70 degrees in November and December. They can get down into, you know, the, the high 60s in January um, and then start to creep back up all the way into May. There's little to no humidity, hardly any rain, and it just is sunshine all day, y'all. This is the reason why people pack up and come down here for the winter. This is why people come down, fall in love and never want to leave because it's absolutely incredible in the wintertime in Florida. There is no doubt about it. Number two, in terms of our pros, is the beaches. Now, Clearwater Beach has been ranked America's number one beach, I don't know how many times, right? It's always up in consideration. You know, there are other beaches, Sarasota, St. Pete Beach, Destin Beach up in the Panhandle. But, you know, Clearwater Beach is absolutely amazing. There is so much to do three miles of white sugary sand beaches. The, the water is clear. It's gorgeous. Um, there's parasailing and boating and uh, fishing and paddle boarding and kayaking. You know, you can go do all kinds of harbor trips on um, dinner cruises. I mean, there's just so much to do. Restaurants, bars, everything you need is located down on the beach specifically. I mean, it's, it's a, literally a city to itself. Clearwater Beach you know, you go down there, you don't ever have to leave, you know, between the hotels and the condos and the beach cottages and every single thing you would ever need is literally right there at your fingertips or within a walk. Um, it's just a wonderful opportunity to go hang out. All right. Number three in terms of our pros are the amenities in Clearwater specifically. You know, Clearwater is not a small city. It's, uh, you know, roughly about 80,000, 100,000 people in Clearwater, I think, as of uh, the time of this recording. Um, but it's got all the amenities in Pinellas County, which is the county that uh, Clearwater is in, which is west of Tampa and Hillsborough County. Pinellas County has one Costco and that one Costco is in Clearwater. It has one BJ's wholesale and that is in Costco as well. It also has a Sam's Club. There are two malls. You got Clearwater Mall and Countryside Mall, which has everything you'll need. Countryside even has a ice skating rink. <laughs> it's crazy. So, I mean, there's Guitar Center and Best Buy, and if you name it, it's in Clearwater. So lots to do and lots of options in terms of those amenities. You know, if you need to, to shop, this is where you go. My wife and I, we live in the Indian Rocks Beach area, um, which is just south of, of uh, Bel Air Beach. And if we're looking at the map here, let's throw that up really quick. We've got Dunedin, which is to the north. You've got Clearwater Beach. Below that, you're going to have Bel Air Beach. 
Indian Rocks Beach. And we live in the Indian Rocks Beach area. And my wife drives to Costco to get our, our groceries every two weeks. And she goes to Costco and loads up on everything. You know, we have Publix at our fingertips right near us, but you know, to go get all that, those bulk items that she really enjoys. And they've got a great meat selection and all those other things. And I'm not trying to sell you on Costco, but she loves to go there. So she'll drive to Clearwater to get those things. So amenities are definitely a great component of living in Clearwater. All right. The next one uh, on our list, the fourth one here is location. All right. Now, Clearwater is lo centrally located in Pinellas County specifically, um, which is, again, is west of Hillsborough County in Tampa proper. But you can take the Veterans Highway directly across the bay and be at the airport in about 35 minutes. Uh, you can be downtown Tampa in 45 minutes. You can be in downtown St. Petersburg in 45 minutes. If you are in downtown Clearwater, you can be at the beach, depending on traffic that day, um, in as little as five minutes. So it's really convenient in terms of location. You know, there are two highway options back across the bay. Um, you've got the Howard Franklin, uh, which is 275. And then, you, again, you've got the Veterans Highway as well that take you on the north side of the bay um, and uh, the Howard Franklin goes across the central component of the bay too. So really good options in terms of that. And you can drive up over top into Oldsmar. Um, we're not landlocked here. We're Peninsula in Pinellas County specifically. So um, we're not an island. So super convenient, easy to get in and out of in terms of actual roadways. And number five on our list of pros is the quality of living. If you take into consideration the weather, the beaches, the cost of living, which if you talk about coastal living, Clearwater is not an expensive place to live. If you compare it to other coastal areas like California and New York, and you look at the Hamptons, I mean, good, goodness gracious. I mean, those the, the, the cost of living in those areas is astronomical. I mean, we're still, you know, below the the U.S. index in terms of average and, and cost of living here. So I love that component. Our health systems are great here. We've got a great uh, VA system. Um, and again, the hospital systems are good. Originally, Clearwater was an area that, you know, was really kind of catering towards retirees, um, you know, but over the years, it's gotten younger and younger. You know, obviously, the beach is a great draw, at, but with the ability to work from home, you know, we're seeing a huge influx of people moving um, that are younger, um, single, family oriented, like, like my family moved down here and the mix of retirees. So what I'll say is it's not weird. You don't have to worry about, about coming and hanging out with retirees all day. That's not what's going on in Clearwater. It's Clearwater and Clearwater Beach are a blast to hang out in. All right, so now that we've said all the pros about living in Clearwater, it's time to get what I would consider the cons out of the way. And number one, which was also a pro, which is going to be a con, is the weather. Now, we talked about all that great weather up front, you know, averaging around 70 degrees, mid 70s during the winter. Well, when the summer rolls around, y'all, I'm telling you what, it is time to get your sweat on because it gets hot quick. From the month of May through November, the average temperatures start to skyrocket. You know, they go from um, the low 70s in May to immediately in the 80s in June. And, you know, they can creep all the way up into the, you know, high 80s, low 90s, depending on the year um, during the midsummer. And we have a crazy rainy season, y'all. And when I say crazy, I mean, it, <laughs> it rains every day. Schedule it. It rains now. It doesn't say it doesn't stay gray and gloomy all day. So I want you to, to keep that in your mind, because if you're coming from a different location, like we moved from the, the Midwest where it was gray and gloomy for months at a time during the winter, um, it will rain every day. But the sun comes out afterwards. And I've, I've heard a friend tell me that um, it's like <laughs> it's like being a, a they know what a crab feels like at a crab boil. Right. Because, you know, it'll rain in the morning or it's really warm all night long. Right. It's like 80 degrees at 2 a.m. in the morning, which the humidity stays in the air, if that's the case. Right. And then the sun comes out and then it starts to steam you like a bag of clams is what they say. It's hilarious when you think about that. I had a friend of mine tell me when we first moved down here, he said, have you ever, you know, been down during a Gulf Coast summer? And I said, no, you know, what, what should I expect? He goes, well, it's like waking up having a Labrador retriever right here in your face. And uh, I got to be honest, it is, it's hot. However, 
you will acclimatize, you will get used to it. Just know this, you know, if you're sweating, so is everybody else. So there's nothing to be ashamed of, but you know, just keep in perspective, do most of your yard work in the morning or late at night during the summer. Like I said, the rainy season, it's going to rain It sometimes it does rain really hard. So keep that in perspective. You are going to need to keep, um, you know, an eye on your landscape outside and around your house to make sure you don't have any, uh, I don't say flooding issues, but water intrusion issues, just because it can happen, right? So I just want to make sure that you keep that in mind. But the big thing is the heat and humidity, they're relentless. You know, it's going to be muggy. It's going to be hot, especially in July, August, and September. So just keep that in mind um, when you live here. But to me, the trade-off of sweating versus freezing, it wasn't even close. Um, I can change my clothes or jump in the pool or go get in the in the, the Gulf, um, rinse off and enjoy my day um, rather than having to bundle up and worry if my fingers are going to have to be defrosted. So those were totally good trade-offs to me. So while that was a pro, it is also a con. All right. Number two on our list of cons is housing. And what, I'm, what I mean by housing is most of the homes in the area here were built in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And they haven't been updated and they were built, you know, for that time period with, you know, a, a retirement community in mind for the most part. So, you know, you've got two bedroom, two bath, you know, homes with a garage um, or three bedroom, um, two baths or three bedroom, one baths in the area um, that haven't really been updated. And the other thing is, is there's no land in Pinellas County to build new properties on guys. So you don't get to see brand new construction for the most part. The Typically, the only way we see a new house be built is if an old existing home is bought, tore down, and then built back up, which, as you can imagine, keeps the prices up. So um, be mindful of that. Uh, rentals are definitely expensive in the area, too. While our overall cost of living is, um, I think, a lot less than any other coastal area you're going to see and actually competes with the, you know, the national average, um, I just, you need to know in terms of housing, you're, what you should expect is a three-bedroom, two-bath, this is the average property, a three-bedroom, two-bath ranch you know, or a two bedroom, two bath ranch that somebody took the garage and converted it into another bedroom. This is pretty common for the area. You will see some older homes too, some turn of the century stuff, but for the most part, um, that, that, that mid century um, ranch style home is what you're going to find in all of Pinellas County um, when you come to the area, just so you know. All right, so that leads us to our third con on the list, which is traffic. Now, with all those amenities that we get, <laughs> it also lends itself to bring more people into the area because of those amenities, right? We've got our beautiful beaches. We've got all the shopping. We've got the malls. We've got Costco. We've got the Philadelphia Phillies who, you know, have their spring training here at Baycare Field. Um, it's a wonderful community. Um, but with that comes more people. And with more people comes more traffic. And Pinellas County overall is pretty pretty dense in terms of population. Um, and with that comes this traffic. So there's going to be times when it's easy to get in and out of places. There's going to be times when it's a little bit more difficult to get in and out of places. You know, so here's what I'll say. If you guys are considering making that move, shoot me a message down below and I will gladly give you guys my, my, my back roads and my back routes to get around all the congestion when it gets busy. It typically will get busy. Um, and this is going to roll us right into number four. Um, it gets crowded. Okay. So number four con is it gets crowded during season. And what, what season is, is it's that time period when the weather's amazing, right? So from November, typically after Thanksgiving up until right around Mother's Day, we call that season down here. And the reason is, is because we have a lot of people who come from other areas that spend the winters here. They're referred to as snowbirds. Okay. Typically, these are northerners, and that term came from, well, the, the birds in Canada in the summer tend to migrate south. Well, along with the birds came the retirees, <laughs> and this is where that term came from, um, the snowbird, right? So the, along with the, the, uh, the snowbirds comes more traffic. So that's why you see this, this, this amp up here um, and this rev up of traffic and congestion, and the beaches can be overwhelmingly crowded, especially during... Uh, spring break. So keep that in perspective. Honestly, my wife and I, we won't go anywhere near the beaches during spring break. It gets crazy. If you're in downtown Clearwater 
and you drive to the beaches today, it will literally take you about five minutes with parking. If you are in downtown Clearwater, when spring break comes, it could take you as much as an hour to cross that bridge. That is insane, right? So keep that in mind, you know? So there are alternate routes. Hit me up if you wanna know those, put those in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to give them to you. And oh, by the way, if you're finding value in this video, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Click that little bell so you can be notified every time we drop a new video just like this. All right. So that's going to move us into number five on our list of pros and cons here. And this is our fifth con, and it's going to be bugs. And if you're not from the area or if you're not from the north or if you're from out west where you have very few bugs because you have a dry, arid climate, well, here it's wet, moist, and hot, which lends itself to some really interesting, creepy crawlies. And uh, again, myself being from the north, I had to adjust to some of this stuff. You know, we didn't have red ants. They call them fire ants down here. If these things get on your legs, uh, I'm going to tell you right now, it's not a happy day. Um, so you want to wear shoes outside, uh, wear your flip flops at all costs, because if you step on one of these ant hills, which you typically can't see, they usually build their... Uh, their ant nest underneath the grass, right? So you kick one over and all of a sudden these things will defend uh, their space. And um, it's not a fun time when that happens, just so you know. Um, the other thing that we didn't have an issue with was termites, maybe where you're from, you're co uh, that's common to you, but they call them wood destroying organisms here. It's part of the home inspection process as well. They check for those, which is a good thing, right? Because they do, they will you know, literally eat your roof um, or eat your wall structures or your property. Now, a lot of the homes here, like uh, they're built from block, right? So we talked about housing earlier. They're built out of block to withstand, you know, hurricanes. It's great. You don't have to worry about that. But what you do have to worry about is these bugs eating the wood in your house. Now, there's treatments for it. Don't stress out about that, but it's there. Okay. Mosquitoes. Mosquitoes can definitely get aggressive. They're not as bad as you think. Um, and, uh, you know, but it's not fun. You don't want to be dealing with mosquitoes in there here. And here's the one that I wasn't expecting. Um, they call them no -seums. Yes, you heard me right. no -seums. <laughs> And the reason they call them noceums is because you can't see them until they start biting you. And I will tell you what, y'all, they fly and they typically hang out in like moist, uh, shadowy areas. So like if you go to the park during the summer and you're at a park that's got a lot of water around it, like this is where you can tend to find those noceums and these things tear you up. I'll tell you what right now, um, I learned the hard way. I had the kids out at the park uh, one summer day and we were hanging out and man, we were just getting tore up. I'm like... I don't see mosquitoes. What's happening here? And, you know, somebody had to educate me like, Juan, those are called no -see and you don't want to be playing with these guys. You move out into the sun, they, you had no problem with them. But if you went into the shade, which it was in the middle of summer, that's where you want to hang out. <laughs> All of a sudden we were getting our butts kicked. So um, you want to go to the parks that tend to treat for these things. Um, it makes things a lot better overall. So I wanted to share that with you guys. And hey, thank you so much for sticking with me. I really hope this video helped you today. You know, if you're considering making that move to Clearwater or the Tampa Bay area, please feel free to reach out to me. If you've got any questions, drop a comment below, whatever it is, I'll help you answer that. But when it comes to relocating, if you're thinking of buying, investing, or relocating to that Tampa Bay area or Clearwater specifically, reach out to me however you got to. My number is link below. My email is there as well. Feel free to grab my calendar, schedule a link, um, a time to meet, and we can discuss, you know, meeting those real estate needs for you. So until next time, thank you so much. Go out and live that Tampa life.